Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, and uh, yeah, once again, thank you for being here, notwithstanding lunchtime. Um, the way we are going to uh, talk about this topic is um, pretty rhizomatic. I'm going to start uh, with uh, you know, kind of drawing a uh, constellation of things that I've seen happening in the Chinese uh, contemporary art ecosystem in the last five to six years. And, um, and then I'm going to uh, involve, of course, Karen on, in this presentation and uh, ask her to go vertically into the idea of col collecting contemporary Chinese art. Um, what entitles me to, to, to address this topic is the fact that I was called in 2010 to be the director of SH Contemporary, Shanghai Contemporary Art Fair which at the time was the most uh, important uh, art fair in mainland China. Uh, since then, it has disappeared, and, uh, but that's uh, an another story which is very interesting in, uh, to address the relationship between private and public companies in China, but it's not, this, this is not the, the, <laughs> the time <laughs> to talk about this. Anyway, um, randomly, uh, when in 2010 I was asked to take care of a stage contemporary, uh, of course, the first thing that I did was to go around and meet all the contemporary art galleries that I would consider interesting and important, both emerging and established. It, it sounds kind of paradoxical now, but uh, in Beijing, when I would go to Beijing to talk to galleries and to curators and to museum directors, the very idea that Shanghai could play a, a key role in the promotion of contemporary Chinese art was uh, met with uh, you know, surprise and disdain almost. Because even just five to six years ago, the capital of contemporary Chinese art was Beijing. And somehow, Shanghai, even if it already had some of the main galleries in China, but it was somehow a, a kind of marginal to the centrality of Beijing, where all the artists, the curators, some of the, of course, the Central Academy of Fine Arts, which is the most important art school in China. And, and that changed completely just oh, in five years. Right now, we could say that uh, from many different uh, point of views, Shanghai has taken over the role of Beijing as a capital of uh, Chinese contemporary art, especially when it comes to the promotion. So, for example, art fairs but also to museums. So the number of museums that opened in the last five years, between 2013, uh, 12 and now, it's uh, amazing. Uh, and they're doing a really important job to promote both contemporary Chinese art in China and some of them abroad. In fact, what changed also com in, a, um, in the last few years is uh, the shift from pure collecting to patronage. Some of the institutions, of the museum institutions, of the based mostly on uh, private museum institutions, mostly based on private contemporary art collections of uh, Chinese art, are not only collecting and displaying, but they are also promoting contemporary Chinese art abroad. So they are taking on the responsibility to support artists and curators to show what's really going on in China in terms of contemporary art. Um, it's very interesting what, what uh, Philip Dinari was uh, saying before about um, the environment of contemporary art uh, exhibitions uh, internationally in the last few years, where there has been very little uh, curatorial take on Chinese contemporary art. We have had a lot of overviews, a lot of uh, kind of loosely curated shows about, I don't know, ink, and the, I mean, the, the, the exhibition at Met springs to mind, but um, it, there, there has been very little work done on, uh, at the curatorial level, both internationally and uh, in China, but that's changing. Of course, in the last few years, the other thing that changed completely is the fact that a lot of young galleries grew and uh, 
a lot of spaces which are not actually galleries, but they prefer to call themselves project spaces, um, have, have been growing steadily, as often run by artists or curators, which is kind of an opportunity, but at the same time tells you about the difference between uh, the perception of galleries in China and uh, in the West or the rest of the world. Sometimes the word gallery in China is interpreted as too much of a commercial word, you know, gives too much of an accent, a commercial accent to, to a project. So a lot of the young, new projects also selling contemporary art, but also you know, promoting curatorial uh, projects and exhibitions, they prefer to not use the word gallery, but, but they support themselves often by selling work. Um, at the same time, it's been very, very interesting to see how the government, and I'm talking both about the central government and the local government, and the local governments and agencies of the government at local level. Um, and here, for example, I'm talking about the, the example of Shanghai again, have, have stepped in into the promotion of contemporary Chinese art. I think, to cut a very long story short, that this has to do with uh, many different reasons. One is that they realize that soft power is really well served by contemporary art and design and contemporary culture, as opposed as the pol policies that they did you know, in the past with, uh, I don't know, Peking Opera or promoting um, um, you know, film, film, films about old Chinese culture. So I think that that's one of the reasons. The other reason is that uh, they realized in China that uh, the contemporary art, culture, and design is really, really supportive of the industrial system. China cannot continue to produce cheaply for other countries. This has been substituted by other countries in, in that area and in other areas. So they realized that uh, they, they need to have more and more specialized production and, uh, and objects. So they realized that art and culture foster this kind of process. Of course, the other reason is to uh, promote consumption, and but most of it than anything, especially in Shanghai, the cultural policies are really key in the urban development process. So for example, the new area of the, of the museums in Shanghai has become probably the most beautiful new area of town. Um, in the last few years, Something happened that was unexpected as well. Which, you know, when I, I remember when I was, ne was there in 2008 and nine, photography, video, installation were barely considered by local collectors and were very much supported by um, international collectors mostly, or Taiwanese collectors, or Indonesian collectors. And uh, I mean, international collectors we've got <laughs> here, <laughs> some who have been very supportive of different media and ways of expressions of, of artists. And in the last few years, both the market and the galleries for these art forms have grown steadily. Um, the other thing that happened is really that a new generation of uh, collectors, both chi from China or living in China and from abroad of the generation of Karen, you know, stepped in and started to collect. And uh, as opposed to what happened in the past, they're not only collecting, I mean, they are supporting definitely you know, art from China and in China, but they're also opening up to you know, international art, and they are really fostering exchange between you know, China and other places around the world. Of course, fairs. Fairs, I mean, now in, chi in Shanghai, for example, and in Beijing, people say that we've got even far too many fairs. Um, in Shanghai in September, we have got three fairs happening at the same time. One is the one that I, uh, is a kind of strange little fair that I organized, highlighting mostly uh, emerging artists and galleries and project spaces at K11, which is a beautiful shopping mall right in the, c in the, city, in the city center. And then we've got uh, Westbourne, which is a, a, an art fair dedicated mostly to important uh, uh, you know, the way they call it, a uh, 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 blue chip gallery presenting mostly important works by established artists. And then we've got Photo Shanghai. Photo Shanghai is the first international fair in the region dedicated to photography and video, which actually 
supports what I was saying before, that you know, it would have been unthinkable until just a few years ago to have a photography fair in Shanghai and China. Now we've got one and it's really growing. It was its a second edition this year. Um, of course, media has grown as well. You know, um, the, the, the environment was very much uh, local and very much difficult to grasp when I got there. And uh, along the years, both online and offline, both digital and on paper, there are some media that uh, for anybody who wants to collect Chinese contemporary art have become a point of reference. I mean, I, I named just Leap, which is a guest here at, um, at Asia Now, but you know, we could talk about Randian online and, um, and the art newspaper. You know, in, in the last five years, it's, there's been an explosion of media dedicated exclusively to Chinese contemporary art. Of course, uh, there are some um, areas that need to be addressed still. You know, the, the, um, the curatorial take of institutions, sometimes it's um, still at, uh, st at the starting stage. And, um, and institutions like UCCA, but also Rockbone, they make, they're putting a lot of effort in making sure that uh, exhibitions are well curated, well executed, and, um, and they've got an academic kind of uh, stand. The, the, the issue is that uh, because of the government, m a lot of uh, the private institutions, we have to think that basically there is not th the only um, public museum dedicated to uh, contemporary Chinese art in Shanghai, for example, is uh, the power station of art, which is a huge former power station, but the rest is all private. They are mostly dedicated to the promotion of contemporary art towards the largest possible public. So they, ve they, they invest very little energies in academic development besides educational activities. They are really dedicated in at enlarging the public of contemporary art as much as they can. Of course, the role of uh, international collectors mm, like uh, the Levies and Hullens uh, in the last uh, 10, 15 years has been key to the development of uh, a dialogue between China and abroad. And I think that right now, a l more and more co collectors from China are understanding that uh, you know, collecting goods is, of course, important, but it's very important to support artists and institutions through patronage. Uh, we had, uh, you know, there is K-11, for example, Adrian Cheng, the owner of this uh, empire of retail uh, spaces, who's constantly supporting uh, contemporary art projects abroad, um, especially with young artists. I think that you know, to understand what and how to collect before going to Karen, um, the first thing to do is, is be engaged. I mean, I'm really surprised by the fact that uh, a lot of people that I meet, who I meet and uh, tell me that they would be interested in uh, assessing information about Chinese contemporary art. They don't know even the basic magazines um, taking care of it, or they don't uh, really look at the internet, or they rarely visit uh, the galleries, even in Europe, who are specialized in, in this uh, area of research. Of course, traveling is key, and um, of course, the kind of work that we are doing uh, both as collectors and as organizers of uh, you know, platforms to display new art are very important. For example, this year, as I was saying, at Art in the City, we showed 12 spaces that even the most knowledgeable collector didn't know about. So it's, it's very important to follow this, net, this little network of uh, people in the know to understand what's really going on. and. Uh, try and figure out a contemporary art scene which is really hill served most of the time in, in, um, in the West. For example, we did a show at the Museum of Contemporary Art which I curate in Milan, which co was called Jin Shen, the act of painting in, in contemporary China. And I think it was the first time in Italy that somebody um, 
had a proper curatorial take on contemporary Chinese art, highlighting the way in which the heritage of Chinese art reemerges in the practice of contemporary artists across all uh, media. We were very lucky because um, Dominique Silvernevi gave us uh, some <laughs> of the works for, for the exhibition. And, um, and, and the role of collectors in this sense is really key because they are, with their activity, uh, they are really promoting what's going on you know, first hand. In fact, I don't know if you're all aware of uh, the SL, but besides collecting, they've got a very, very important um, digital activity, which will be shown now by Karen. Uh, I will continue to talk after Ka Karen's presentation, but I would like, because I see uh, uh, quite a few people in the audience who have got, uh, I'm sure have got something to say. Uh, I would like to hear from them as well. Well, thank you, uh, Massimo, for this uh, great introduction. Uh, and uh, we are really happy uh, to have you all. We know it's lunchtime, and, and thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Karen Lavi, and I'm going to give you, I think that was the whole point of our uh, talk today, uh, to have a, a different point of view of the, of the uh, art world with a curator and myself uh, who has been collecting with uh, my family. GSL collection, but also working um, in the art market and, and with collectors today. Uh, so uh, a bit of our background uh, about GSL collection, to make it short, we started 10 years ago. Uh, it's a family collection. Uh, we um, uh, arrived a bit by coincidence in China uh, because the, uh, my uncle, the brother of my mother, um, uh, moved to Shanghai. Uh, 10 years ago. We're actually celebrating the SL collection 10 years uh, this year. Um, and the question is why we've, we've been to, to China and we started to collect Chinese contemporary art. Um, we think that, um, and especially my father is here, Sylvain Levy, uh, the, the, the art is the mirror of a society. And it's it's true because you know China has uh, 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 um, changed a lot. I mean, since uh, uh, the beginning of, of Chinese contemporary art, and uh, and also the, the, the city has transformed itself um, uh, a lot. In 1971, 79, you had no skyscrapers, uh, and Shanghai today has twice more than in New York. So it's giving you a, a bit of a, of the idea of how the the, the, the city the the country has changed also. Uh, China has five years, um, five thousand years of, of culture. Um, the artists today don't want to consider themselves uh, only as part of the Chinese uh, contemporary uh, scene, but also making their 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 own art and and being part of a global uh, uh, Chinese uh, artist community. And also, why we we were also interested with uh, China is because of the potential of the market. Uh, as uh, you may know or not, China represents the second uh, art market in the world today, um, and uh, you have uh, as many artists as in the, the international um, community. Uh, so we thought it was really, really interesting for us to uh, to focus and 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 and, and greatly appreciate the the, the um, uh, culture and the Chinese uh, uh, art market. So. Myself, um, I discovered China 10 years ago when we uh, went to China for the first time. If you can just change the next slide, I don't know if you want to, it's easier. Uh, so we actually, um, uh, after doing all the, the fantastic uh, cultural uh, visits uh, in Shanghai, decided to go and, and, and visit Mogan Shanlu, one of the uh, first art center uh, uh, in Shanghai. And um, we actually met Lawrence Hebling, uh, the director of Shangart uh, Gallery. And the first work we've collected is uh, Jingyi, uh, a painting by Jingyi that you can see uh, uh, with the artist himself. Um, and um, so my experience was really to start uh, working with Lawrence, who offered me uh, an internship in his gallery. Uh, and I've really discovered uh, um, a community and, and the artists themselves were taking me to their studios 
we're having lunch together and and, uh, and really it was uh, um, for me a, a discovery Chinese uh, contemporary art. Um, also after this internship that uh, I was really happy about, I decided to, and I had the opportunity to work with Annie Barak, uh, who is actually the curator of Asia Now um, and a, a fantastic inspiration uh, to work with him where we actually did a, a sculpture project in China during the World Expo uh, with uh, 28 um, international artists. So not only Chinese, but also international. And that was really interesting because it was the beginning of what we were saying of having Western art mixed with also with uh, Chinese uh, contemporary. Um, and, um, and after that, I went back to London and decided to work for Y-Cube, uh, a gallery, uh, to continue actually my, my experience um, in, the, in the art world. Um, also being very involved with DSL collection because we were really uh, going every year, uh, meeting the artists, uh, and the artists as the collectors, um, as Didi Tech, Adrian Sheng, or and other collectors um, were coming also to visit us in, in Paris or in London. And, uh, and I think it was very interesting because we always um, kept a, a contact with the artists, but especially today with the social networks, even if I was in London, I was still really, really uh, in contact with them uh, through WeChat. And, um, and uh, I, I've, I've after worked in the auction houses at Philips, then uh, Sotheby's, uh, and uh, I was actually um, so key, uh, uh, taking care of the young collectors. And this was interesting for me because I really uh, discovered also, of course, the contemporary Western uh, uh, art and market, but I was still very, very involved with the, with the Chinese contemporary market, especially when I was going to travel to China. So I think it was really interesting, and I've left Sotheby's one year ago um, to uh, make my own experience, to continue with our fantastic uh, family collection um, and that uh, we, we really want to, to support and go to, to China uh, more and more. Uh, and, uh, and also to, um, uh, to, to really help uh, and, uh, and promote uh, today uh, Chinese contemporary art, um, especially in, uh, in Europe. Um, so my, my personal uh, uh, tips or points uh, 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 of how you can really be involved with Chinese contemporary art. Um, physically in China, you have more and more galleries, especially in Beijing at 798 space, uh, but also in the Western art fairs. Uh, today you have uh, at Freeze four Chinese uh, galleries that have participated. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> good news. Uh, then FIAC also is hosting some galleries, but I think um, Asia now today, it's, it's a, a really a, a making a shift and a turning point of, of hosting uh, the Asian galleries and the best of today is really that, that came and, and we hope there will be more uh, coming as well. Um, and um, also the, the Western galleries as Y Cube, Gagosian have a real interest of showing uh, Chinese uh, contemporary artists so it's, uh, you can really see that they, they, they want to, to have more and more um, uh, artists and it's a good way to also uh, inform yourself on, on, the, on the, the uprising and, and, uh, and uh, Chinese contemporary artists. Um, we also see that the auction houses as uh, Christie's and Sotheby's uh, are now uh, uh, promoting uh, young uh, uh, Chinese contemporary uh, uh, artists in their cells, which is a, a real uh, new uh, uh, operation and, um, and, and we really uh, uh, think that it's gonna be more and more uh, important. Um, but also the digital, I mean, GSL collection is, um, uh, has decided not to have a physical uh, museum for the moment and, uh, and we really want to share uh, to the public uh, through new technologies and digital, the collection. And, and I think, you know, uh, through, for example, Leap or Radium magazine, you can also um, uh, inform yourself with all the, the, the Chinese contemporaries. So these were my 
few tips, and uh, <laughs> if you have any questions, we are waiting for the questions now because we will get running late. Of course, it's, it's very interesting, uh, the, the gallery scene na right now in, um, in China, in Asia, because up to a few years ago, of course, the, the Chinese-based the Chinese galleries were in charge of Chinese art, and they were mostly representing Chinese artists. Bas besides the international galleries in China, like PACE or Galleria Continua, most Chinese galleries were only representing Chinese artists. And basically, they're, they're the monopoly somehow. Uh, and there were a few gal international galleries. Some of them uh, are here um, representing uh, Chinese, Chinese art abroad, but there, there were exceptions. And in the last few years, the, you know, the big, powerful uh, global galleries have stepped in for many different reasons. Of, of course, out of uh, sheer and uh, pure curiosity for what's going on in that, uh, in that area of the world, but also, of course, be galleries being uh, commercial enterprises to you know, conquer a new market. So what the, was a very balanced uh, um, you know, relationship between the galleries in China and you know, the local, let's call them that way, even if you know, uh, talking about Shanghai and call it the local, it's kind of strange, and the global galleries, was, you know, there was a balance. Right now, there is a very strong competition because most of these galleries not only uh, have got offices in uh, Hong Kong, for example, for obvious uh, fiscal reasons, but uh, they've got representatives in uh, all the cities and countries where the main collectors are. are. So, you know, all the, the, you know, if you think about galleries, Hauser and Wirt or Gagosian, they've all got representatives in areas where there are big collectors. And uh, of course, sometimes you, f you think that um, you know, it's, um, it's very interesting, this shift that was created both by this presence, increasing, you know, increasing presence in, in China and in Asia, and the arrival of uh, Art Basel Hong Kong, which has really reshuffled the balance and uh, between uh, galleries and uh, and actors in in uh, in the region. I think also the international uh, collectors are very interested to discover, you know, Chinese contemporary art, and I think it's um, it's of course China is a you know growing fast market, and we also see a, a young generation of collectors in China um, that are eager to to come and see and visit international art fairs. And the, the, the fact that you have also a representation of Chinese you know, artists uh, as well internationally is, is, is very important yeah, for because them. It, you know, it, 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 when I was appointed director of research contemporary, I had been to China a few times uh, doing research and meeting artists and curators, but I was not an expert of contemporary Chinese art. I don't even speak Chinese. And I used, you know, ethnographically my ignorance as a tool to develop the project somehow. But you know, it, it, the, one of the most interesting things is to, uh, was, you know, to cha constantly challenge my perception of uh, things, my very definition of quality, my the very definition of what I liked and what I didn't. Um, because of course is another, you know, you're within another framework, you're in the presence of another culture, and therefore, you know, when you question the objects or the installations or the spaces in front of you, the key thing is to, you know, challenge yourself first. So to always put the observer between within the process of uh, of observing. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you tend to do what. Uh, for example, most uh, Western institutions do with Chinese contemporary art. They, they collect works which somehow belong to a canon you know, of definition of whatever contemporary art is. And so they choose contemporary Chinese art according to a Western canon. Of course, the, the, the work mm -hmm. that we are all doing is uh, the opposite, the reverse of that. No, we are trying really, uh, you know, ethno Promoting. somehow Promoting. ethnographically to understand, mm -hmm. you know, 
whatever that means, the reality of what's going on, and promote it. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's challenging. And the reason why you know, sometimes Western collectors rely on Western galleries to uh, choose uh, Chinese mm -hmm. contemporary artists is because you know, they need some reassurance you know, so if it, they were chosen by Ivan Vert or by Mr. Gagosian or by, you know, and, and you see also that two, yeah. it means that somehow. No, no, but they're also very interested in the young generation, I think, of the artists. And it's very important to say that they, a lot of the artists are, are came uh, also um, at Asia Now um, this year uh, is to also really, uh, you know, show what's happening, I think, in China, and, and, and the fact that um, uh, you have this first, third generation of artists, um, and, and, and they really want to, 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 to be, uh, you know, part of the international and global community, yeah. and, and this is really interesting. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. You talk a lot about, you know, international auction house, like Sotheby's or Christie, but are there any, I mean, Chinese auction house, how is the market inside? I mean, who is collecting? There are lots of, because we talk about a lot about Western collectors, mm -hmm. but how, what's the perception of the Chinese market? In, in China, probably, the, the, the market is very segmented. You know, you've got mainland China, but in mainland China, you've got peop, you know, the collectors from Shanghai, from Beijing, who've been collecting for many years, mm -hmm. following the best and the most important dealers and galleries. Then, of course, you've got uh, you know, very rich people in the second tier cities who enter the collect, you know, collecting on a later stage. Then you've got the Indonesian chains, who have got a completely different pattern of collecting than the, the, the mainland chains. Uh, although things are crossing over compared to the past, then of course you've got Taiwan, and they've got another partner pattern of collecting. Then you've got you know, the foreigners, and the foreigner, foreigners also, you can divide between the Laoai, the, the expats living in Shanghai, who collect you know, but maybe by following younger emerging galleries, and maybe you know, and then the foreigners coming to Shanghai or Beijing and going to the main galleries, of course, and choosing in uh, less, you know, kind of wi with less research at their back. Um, it is true that Chinese collect mostly Chinese. It was true. Also, that's changed a lot in the last few years. The characteristic with the uh, Chinese uh, contemporary art scene is dated for 30 years, you know, yeah. and you have three generations of artists. And to answer your, uh, your question, uh, you have two main um, Chinese auction houses uh, right now. So you have Poly Auction and Chi China Garden. They are mainly concentrating on the traditional um, Chinese art, um, which is very interesting because today the collectors in China are mainly collecting Zaoqi or Shu Te Chun that are from the first uh, 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 generation of you know, the, what we call the modern Chinese art. And so there is a possibility mm -hmm. today to, um, to collect the young generation of Chinese art artists. Because for the moment, the main collectors in China are focusing on the traditional Chinese art. So it's, 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 it's great to have this access today with you know, Asia now to the, the young uh, <laughs> Chinese art scene. Uh, and, uh, and we can, and, um, and, and uh, you know, we, we've, uh, we've been many times in Shanghai with Alexandra Fan, who is of course the founder of, of, the, of Asia now. And we discovered, we went to the art studios and um, today to have brought this community here um, and for you to discover in Paris uh, a few days from, you know, FIAC, because it's, it's a very busy time. It, it's, it's a real possibility to, to see the young uh, uh, generation of artists. And, and this is today, um, um, uh, I think, important, as you see also the, the Youth Museum with Budutech or DSL Collection as uh, K-11. Uh, Adrian Sheng, they are focusing on the young generation. Well, um, as a matter of fact, this is very interesting because right now still, and I think it will change, 
um, it is already changing. There is a whole different system in buying, like in the other, in the Western part of the world. Normally, dealers, almost all of them, um, are selling most of their pieces through their own shop and otherwise into fairs. Now, in China, most of the items are s being sold through auctions. And this is because of there are not many um, uh, fairs that are really important. Like I was in Shanghai and I visit your fair and I was in the photo fair and uh, Art on the Bund, but they're small. They're even, it, it's, it's a boutique, Art on the Bund is a boutique fair. No international people are coming there. So there is no, fairs are very important to have a conversation going on, to, to, um, to um, how do you call that, to talk to each other, to exchange your cultural things, to exchange questions. If you're only going to an auction, you're only one of them, you're bidding and you're going away. So therefore, it's a very different system. Now, um, at the moment, the auctions are very weak. The, the selling points are not that high. And you must imagine that most of the um, market, which is indeed the second market in the world, but it's almost all about antiquities and decor decorative arts. So it's only a small piece about contemporary art. And the selling has been going down right now. And it is because of new laws going on in China. And it's about fi financial background, etc. I, I don't want to go too much into that. Yeah. And, um, and it's also about going more mature. Some of the auctions, it's a really difficult um, a technique, as you know, I used to work at auction houses too. So um, you see that half of what has been offered sold, actually, in 2014. This is according to a report made by Tefoc. And um, so in a way, you see it's becoming more mature, so there will be a base. And I think that from there, we um, are going to have a better, um, a, a better market now it's going like this, in my view. It, depend mm. it really I'm, depends. I'm sorry that yeah. uh, yeah, okay. I said that. I'm sorry to interrupt. And then I'm glad we prepared a very intimate discussion. I'm glad to see that everyone's <laughs> sharing you know, own experience or insight. Thank but you. I'm afraid that, everything, um, that today we are delayed a bit of one hour. So if uh, it's fine, and I'd like to ask the speakers for much. the final Thank comment. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.